so Steve will now speak about why to develop a CI first. So, have fun. Hi there. I'm an engineer that works for uh, BHGE, or used to be GE Oil and Gas, and uh, use Python quite a lot in my work. And this is why I think that it's a very good idea to actually produce a command line interface, even if you're going for something that's eventually going to have a nice GUI interface or a web interface. So, let's see how we go. Okay. There's lots of things to think about before you actually start um, doing a GUI. What controls are you going to be putting on there? What you need it to do? The functional things, which actually comes down to your code. And the, after all, the really important part, unless you're a graphics designer, which I know there's a few here, is what does the code do? Does it work? Yeah? Putting a GUI on can take a lot of time and if you're not a graphics designer, it tends to produce a mess. For, for many of us, struggle with that sort of thing. It's great on the coding, but getting it looking, looking nice and working, two different challenges. Personally, I think putting a GUI on at the beginning can leave you trapped in things that you don't actually need and spending a lot of time on the GUI development before you've done any coding. Uh, a lot of the experts uh, always say that separating your code into a front end and a back end, a business engine, or an GUI, are a good practice. Putting command line interface in first tends to be a nice slender thing and gives you a degree of that separation. Yeah. Obviously, some things pretty much hopeless without a GUI. Um, a drawing package, graphics editing packages, you're going to have to put that in. But a lot of the modules within those might well be suitable for having a command line interface anyway and should be developed separately. And you can find that if you put a command line interface in for your development, you end up with useful separate utilities as part of your package. Yeah, um, one of the uh, obvious areas that you're going to definitely want a GUI, photo editing, photo manipulation, yeah? But Image Magic is one of the most widely used image manipulation programs, and it's all on the command line. Any, any GUIs you get is bolt on. <laughs> yeah? So, yeah, think twice before you start with the GUI. Right, now... What's really nice, if you put a command line interface in, there are a couple of tools that will let you automatically create at least a first draft of your GUI. Yeah? Now, if you've developed your code to work on the command line, tested it working on the command line, you know the code's working, you've maybe got some useful utilities, if you can then bolt on a GUI rapidly, that might be the end of the job. Or turn it over to the graphics designer. <laughs> yeah? Now, having done your code with the command line, you'll have decided things like, right, that needs to be a flag. Or that needs to be a file. You've decided what you actually need. Once you've decided what you need, that tells you what you want in your GUI. Flags are going to be options, tick boxes, or toggle menus. A file is going to be the drag or drop or a file selector. Yeah? Multiple files, same thing. If you've got things that are exclusive choices, they're going to end up being radio buttons. But until you start coding, you're not going to find out, or, unless you've got a really good spec. And frankly, that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> now, you've got a couple of choices. You can either make your own mapping from your command line options to a GUI, or there's a couple of choices, GUI and Quick. Which of those you use depends on a couple of issues. If you 
develop your, your command line using argpass, then it's in the standard library. You can use GUI, and that will create you a WX widgets, WX Python GUI interface. There's actually a couple of choices within the GUI library of how you go about it, but they're incredibly useful. If you've used Click for your command line, I know it's very popular, that generates your um, GUI for you um, using Quick, or gives you the options of doing it with Quick. That will give you a Qt5 GUI. Now, personally, I steer clear of QT rather than WX because there's licensing issues that my employer doesn't like with QT. <coughs> WX is a much simpler licensing model, but may vary between you. Personally, I like, also like using the argpass method because basically it comes down to something that's stored in a dictionary. And it's a lot easier to manipulate the dictionary if you can decide to roll your own GUI generation than it is if you've got to parse helps and doc strings, which is what uh, QT does for you, uh, what Click does for you. Yeah. So I'm going to be concentrating on the uh, WX widgets based and argpass. Apologies to anyone that loves Click. I think it clicks great. In this case, we're going to skip it. OK, so lots of examples in how to use ArgPass. How many people have used it in the past? Vast majority. How many haven't? Not many. OK, so we don't need to go too much into what ArgPass gives you. But a quick couple of examples. All right, so in this case, we're creating in our parse arguments, a parser to do our parsing for us, adding a bit of information into it, adding a couple of arguments that we want, one or more input files. I know the text's a little bit small on that, and I'm not sure if I can zoom on this. Let's try. No don't have the option I'm afraid. I will be posting uh, the actual code up onto GitHub. Maybe control and plus? Hmm? Control plus. Let's try it. Control. Ah, hooray. A new feature in this IDE since this last time I tried that. So, so we've got a parser being created given some information to store for the helps, and we've added a couple, three arguments. One logic flag, reverse. It's a fairly meaningless little example. And obviously, if we go to the command line, we can run that with give it no information it gives us our base message if we ask for help it tells us what our options are and in this particular case if we just give it a file name then it tells us what the options have been selected. Yeah? Which have been the defaults. If we decide to go across to the simplest GUI version, we need to add two whole lines to our code. An import of GUI and a decorator. The only difference between the two files. Now when we run it, we 
should get. How gooey. Not bad for two lines, is it? Okay, it's rough and crude, but it does more or less the job we need. One of the things I don't particularly like about this is that uh, your files is a type-in or paste-in field. But luckily, ArgPass does give us a way around this. Is that cross-platform? Yep, yeah, WX Python is um, available and pip installable on most platforms and is Python 3 compatible now since version 4, which is uh, a big step forward. Uh, as is the pip install, before it was an EXE to install, which was a little bit more troublesome, and you couldn't use it in virtual environments very easily. Um, but they made great strides on that. So if we go to our third demo, third example, we've got exactly the same code. Again, this time we're using GUI parser instead of our standard parser. Yeah? And we've added to our in-file option an override of widget equals file chooser. Yeah? So, not a huge difference. This time, when I run it, we get a slightly different GUI. We've got a browse button. And we can pick our file or files. And when we run it, it does everything for, nicely for us. You can see there we've got our details of the file that's been opened as an IO stream. Yeah. So generating a GUI from the command line, once you've got the command line, is easy. Yeah. Okay. It's not the prettiest GUI. It's a good starting point, though. And just for a little example of rolling your own, one, I pointed out that one of the things that distinguished Click and ArgPars is that ArgPars isn't parsing your doc strings. It's generating things. You're actually supplying a set of add arguments. Yeah? And those add arguments, when you look at it, could pretty much be a dictionary. A dictionary entry. Uh, yeah? Because you've got for a particular line, a, na a list of names to put it in, and then a set of parameters which are named parameters. Sounds like a dictionary to me. Yeah? So, of course, when we come to rolling our own, we can use the same sort of trick. In here, I've got a list of dictionaries, one for the command line arguments, or command line, um, and one, come on, page up, yeah, a base set of arguments. set of optional arguments, command line arguments, or command line only arguments, and graphic GUI only arguments. This is an example of rolling your own, yeah? And basically I'm parsing those and using those to generate a WX interface myself. And just to give you a flavor of what that looks like,
Now this one, I've actually got a little bit sneaky and it runs from the command line with no arguments. It will start the GUI. And this, I've got a drag and drop area rather than a uh, file chooser. But you can also use it from the command line with exactly the same code. If it got command line arguments, it processes them and runs. It doesn't start the GUI. So we've got the best of both worlds. Right, quickly run through the rest of the slides. We've got options of running, installing it. Think about it, you've got the command line <coughs> interface, a, C a CGI web interface is going to take pretty much the same parameters. A microservices interface is going to take the same parameters and pass them between. And if you're pipelining things, then you can do that again. It's all the command line. Right. So you can automate your tests. Make sure you've got your business log. So you haven't got to pay someone to click on things. <laughs> or spend a lot of time mocking things up or automating GUI clicks. And you can just test your GUI separately. And if you happen to have to do a GUI in Arabic or Chinese or something like that, the reasonable chance you won't even understand what the labels on the buttons are yourself. So that's it. Get your back end right and you're a long way there. Once we've done that, you can package it up into an EXE. Plenty of ways of doing that if you're on Windows or into an app for Mac. I'm afraid I don't do much Mac, so uh, generating apps is a little bit outside my field. Or as I said, putting it inside a container or on a web server, you've got all the options available. And once I actually manage to get the code uploaded into GitHub, that'll be the URL that the code and the slides will be available at. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. The one I'm not saying, but obviously between your command line arguments and the GUI arguments, yeah, create the two separate sets. There's a way of doing it where you only need to create one set of arguments that is used for both sides. It depends on what you're doing. I mean, for the GUI, I wanted to have the option of preserving which tick boxes were selected. And I didn't particularly didn't want that option available for the command line. So just separating them out into two separate lists was, made life a little bit easier. And I could, in my dictionary of entries for all of them, I had the option of putting extra parameters in that, sit, that ArgPass wouldn't take that the GUI needed, and just filtering them if I was building the command line. Yeah, makes life very easy. It'd be nice to actually get a slight change to ArgPass to have give it an option for ignore any parameters you don't understand in this context. But then again, moaning about anything it doesn't understand is probably a good idea most of the time. If so, that's great. That'd be good. Anyone else? Yeah. If you ever create wizards, make choices, because uh, my company is switching from ArcPass to Command, because you can use non modules, but so you can uh, select a module that you want to have in the script. Mm -hmm. and you can get uh, uh, arguments that you can pass through. Yeah. Um, I've not used that particular approach, but again, if you've got a command line framework that you can access the module, which either click or ArgPass can give you, the, the magic of the uh, if def main is very useful. Make, I mean, I've had a lot of bits of larger programs that have actually turned out to be more useful and more popular than the whole program. 
or certainly more used. But because I'd put a wrapper around them to be able to test them as a standalone, hey, we can use that. Need it. Yeah. So I've not tried that particular package and used it. Anyone? Else? Yeah. In general, it tends to, ooh, the automatic generation tools tend to just go on the order of the arguments um, and do their own thing. Obviously, if you're general, with the roll your own example, I got to choose and say, right, these are all going to be in a block or a group, and then you can do it. And it's actually not, I was pleasantly surprised how easy it was to generate your own automatically generatable GUI rather than generating a GUI separately. It's pretty much a one-to-one. -one. Yeah. Almost every GUI, and of course you could take the same approach for rolling your own if you want to use a different GUI library altogether, one that's not supported, then that's fine. You just work out your mappings, say right, from my list of arguments, these are the options I need to produce and the types of the options. And just about every GUI library that I've come across gives you a way of selecting files or file paths. It gives you a way of selecting on-off options, a way of making choices, a way of triggering events. Not a lot else to do. <laughs> Any more? Yeah? Is it possible to get the code that generates the GUI so that you can do minor customizations? Yeah, it's all open source code. No, I mean um, the, the library generates the GUI for you, but in the background it generates some code for that GUI to render. Is it possible to get that code? It's you could adjust the library. The current libraries that don't, as far as I know, actually generate a GUI code as such. I think there's actually a couple of. Um, other libraries that do the same sort of thing but that generate Java GUIs for you for the web interfaces and those you could probably tweak afterwards. I'd discourage that personally because it's much better to change the way that the generation generates it so it will always generate it right. So when you make a change, you've got your, ch your change in your new GUI. If you've got a customization step in between, then you're going to be on holiday one day when a really urgent change needs making and the customization step's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And then, hey, that code that he's got, it's a total mess. Yeah. Also, when the libraries are updated, you always need to revisit how yeah. you're doing it. Yeah. And you know, because these are open source libraries, if you come up with a good way of imp and if something that's a real improvement, you usually find the author will be willing to take it on and incorporate it in the library, or you can fork the library and head your own direction. The joy of open source. Okay, last one. Uh, when the uh, GUI pops up, I, I would assume that all the logs generated will appear on the uh, command uh, terminal, right? And it It is. You can do use a redirect of standard out to a standard out window. No, I mean from the GUI. Yeah. On its lovely text box that's like You can do it, yeah. You can read you can capture your standard out and redirect it it and where that redirection occurs to, you've normally got a choice about. So you could have a component within your GUI to capture the standard out. The only problem is of course if your GUI fails to be built you're not going to be able to see your log. <laughs> okay. Right. And um, my okay. time is just about up, I think. Yeah, it's about. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you.